Welcome to Douglas County News Exchange. I'm your host, Lena Hardy. We begin our show this month with tips from our fire safety expert about open burning regulations for Douglas County. Watch this video to ensure you're following all the regulations issued by the fire department. Hello, I'm Sherry Yerda with the Douglas County Fire Department. Today on Fire Safe, we're going to discuss open burning regulations in Douglas County. Douglas County is one of the metro Atlanta counties affected by the air quality control regulations enacted by the Georgia Environmental Protection Division, or EPD. Important dates to remember include the following. The burn ban is effective between May 1st and September 30th of each year. Open burning is allowed between October 1st and April 30th of each year. There are a number of exceptions which allow for certain types of open burning, even during the prescribed burn ban. Some of these include carrying out recognized agricultural procedures that are necessary for production or harvesting of crops. Open burning for agricultural purposes is allowed by permit at any time during the year. Permits may be obtained only from the fire department's administrative office or fire prevention bureau for agricultural burns. Recreational burns, which are not larger than three feet in diameter and two feet in height, are allowed throughout the year and no permit is required. Recreational burns larger than three feet in diameter and two feet in height are also allowed throughout the year but do require a permit. These permits are issued only by the Fire Department's Administrative Office or Fire Prevention Bureau. Fire set for the cooking of food for immediate human consumption are allowed throughout the year and do not require a permit. But remember, gas and solid fuel grills may not be used on porches, decks, balconies, or patios of apartment buildings. Between October 1st and April 30th, open burning is allowed, subject to regulations and permit procedures. Open burning of leaves on the premises on which they fall by the person in control of the premises is allowed and requires a permit issued by the fire department. Disposal of vegetative debris from storm damage is allowed and burning for the purposes of weed abatement, disease, and pest prevention are also allowed. All open burning requires a permit issued by the fire department. Restrictions to open burning include the following. Burn permits will not be issued if the wind speed is greater than 10 miles per hour, and burn permits previously issued will be canceled due to changes in wind speed to exceed 10 miles per hour. Burn permits will not be issued during periods of low humidity or during dry weather conditions. Open burning should be conducted between 10 a.m. and one hour before sunset. All open burning must be attended until the last embers of the fire have been extinguished. An effective means of controlling the fire must be immediately available at all times. Citizens are required to obtain a written permit prior to commencement of any open burning activities and permits will be issued for a maximum of 10 days. The permit holder must call 770-949-1212 each day during the term of the permit to advise if burning is intended and to ascertain if burning is allowed on that day. If you have additional questions regarding the open burning regulations, you can visit your nearest fire station. Thanks, and until next time, stay fire safe. Did you know that your pennies are still at work? It's time for another update on the status of projects from Fire EMS, Transportation, and Parks and Recreation. Here's the second episode of Splost Up to the Minute with Commissioner Henry Mitchell III. Welcome to this segment of Splost Up to the Minute Update. I'm Commissioner Mitchell. Now today, we've got a couple of updates on where your Splost penny is being spent. We're gonna go to a couple of topics, so stay with me, but also I've got some special guests with me, so you guys introduce yourselves. Yeah, my name's Terry Gable. I am with Moral and Altabelli, and I'm the program manager for the uh, Douglas County Splost program. Good. Um, I'm David Good. I'm the communications director for the Splos. Okay, let's get this thing moving pretty quick because these yes, updates sir. are kind of going to move pretty quick. So we want to tell people exactly where their Splos dollars are being spent, starting with Parks and Rec. Uh, well, Parks and Rec, so overall, the program is about a $106 million program for the six years. Parks and okay. Rec's got $17 million, 
17 million uh, dollars of that. Okay. Uh, we're standing on the side of one of the bigger projects for the multi-purpose rec center. We're at Boundary Waters, by the way, just in case yep. you didn't know. And where this this particular facility is right now under preliminary design, and we're looking at a couple schemes, but that's moving forward. Just up the road here uh, in the park is the uh, soccer field and football field uh, concession building. Got you. So that's another uh, big project for the park. So okay. everything's moving wide, right along. We spent about $10 million in the program so far. Um, a good bit of that money was in fire, started out with, was in fire department and in transportation. Uh, in the fire, we've got the countywide digital radio system that we're working on. Okay. Uh, it's moving along quite well. It's about 23% done. Uh, transportation, a lot of that has been in, in resurfacing and in some intersection projects that we're doing. So the programs move along very well. Uh, the revenues are coming in up. That's, that's, that's been great. That's a good thing. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. we're, we're um, kind of at roughly we've got a, a higher, a, a bigger return on, on the, the penalty spot. So maybe people are spending more dollars. And yeah. Cents. Okay, Looks like the good. economy's picking up. Hopefully Good's that'll done. be a trend that'll continue. Okay. June was right at $2.2 .2 million. So that was above our projections got and you. we're hoping that's going to continue. Okay. So let's, let's talk about the Senior Citizen Center. I mean, David. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, well, okay. with the Senior Center is going to be, of course, here in, in Lithia Springs and it's going to be on a site over there by one of the the fire stations Correct. right behind um, I believe it's Cornerstone Baptist Church. And and that's coming along pretty good? Oh, that's coming along actually very well where now we're into the form of actually engaging the public physically right there in their face. Um, if you go over there on, at Cornerstone Baptist Church we will have a public engagement meeting on September 6th okay. and then one month later on October 4th we'll also have a meeting over at uh, First Baptist in Lithia Springs in order for the people to tell us what do they want to see in this senior center. Got it. This way they'll get a chance to at least identify some things they would like to see in the center. Correct. Uh, they can kind of talk about the makeup of the center and what kind of even program we might want to have at the center, correct? Right. Because then one thing that we do know is that they, we've heard they mm -hmm. do not want the same thing that's already at Woody Fight. So they want, which is the existing senior center, they want to have something that is going to be unique, maybe even to the citizens here. So that's why they're input is very valuable. Okay, so we need that. So yes, sir. give us those dates again so we can um, make sure it's we... It's going to be September 6th over at Cornerstone Baptist Church and then October 4th over at First Baptist in Lith of Lithia Springs. Okay, one last piece, sidewalks. I mean, there was a couple of sidewalks project that was going on, so... Yep. I know we the, got a couple of, we got about a minute, okay. All right. Part of uh, the SPLOS program is try to identify schools that were missing sidewalk, okay. gaps in sidewalk. Okay. So we do have uh, three projects currently at New Manchester High, Lithia Springs, and uh, Chestnut middle yes. to uh, do some add some more sidewalks in those areas and okay, get so kids those, on sidewalks instead of in off the grass and off the paths. So those projects are coming right along pretty They're in design stage. Okay. Uh, right now we're out doing some preliminary work with surveying so it's coming along fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did we miss anything? Uh, no, just uh, just make sure you keep on going to your local store, spend local, <laughs> keep it going and if you have any questions or whatever you can always visit our website at 2016splots.com. Give that again? 2016 splots. 2016splost.com. Again, thank you for this quick up to the minute SPLOST update. And keep in mind, we'll keep this ongoing and you'll see exactly where your SPLOST dollars are being spent. Again, I'm Commissioner Mitchell. And again, thank you to my guests. Thank you. And thank we'll you. catch up uh, on the next round. Have a great day. The Cultural Arts Council of Douglasville in Douglas County is currently hosting their annual National Open Visual Arts Show. This competition and exhibit showcases a wide variety of high quality art from around the country. All of the competition entries have been submitted, so let's take a look inside the exhibit and talk with Executive Director Emily Leitner before the judges make a final decision. So we have our annual NOVUS exhibit, which stands for National Open Visual Art Show, and it's going to run through the month of September. We have our opening reception September 6th from 6 to 8 p.m. here at the Cultural Arts Center. It will run all the way through September 26th. It is the largest exhibit that we have here at the Arts Center. It is artists all across the country that exhibit from Arizona to Florida to New York and, of course, Georgia itself. Uh, we have 47 artists this year, which is more than we've had in the past, and we have over 70 pieces of artwork this year. Um, so we have a wide range of mediums from sculpture, uh, sculptures to 
um, oils to, and uh, acrylics, and of course we have bronze work as well. Uh, we offer $1,000 cash prizes. Um, and they are a judge for West Georgia uh, teaching artists will come in and judge our exhibit and then we'll present those the night of the reception. We have a cash award also by Douglas County Art Guild and they have a Marianne Carney Award in honor of her and they select a painting. Our awards are sponsored by the Douglasville Convention Visitors Bureau and uh, they're located just around the corner so you can see they have a lot of great plans and itineraries for you to help plan your great weekends. The Cultural Arts Center is open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So we have a, a brand new logo that we're really excited about. And it, we've been talking about it for a few years now. And um, in June, we opened up a, or May, we actually opened up a logo uh, contest design, allowing the community and uh, across uh, other graphic artists across the state and the country to submit different designs. We had over 30 designs submitted and we had um, them all displayed at our annual meeting, which took place on June 16th. So at that meeting, people not only got to see the logos um, that were submitted, but they also got to vote for their favorite logo. And then we narrowed it down to the top two from the community input, and our board voted on the top design. So the winner of that was Whitney Constantine from the Douglas County Chamber. Um, so we're very excited, and you know, also going to a local um, in the community was uh, great. It also plays in um, ties with the Douglas County Community community strategic plan um, that everybody was able to see at the unveiling uh, last week. So we're excited to, to get that off the ground and, and see it come into play. So we have a newest fundraiser, it's called Cheers to the Arts. Um, this kind of spurred out of our strategic plan that we just finished and we really want to reach more of our millennials. And so what better way than have a, to a, a Cheers event. So this will be a unique and real beer tasting here at the Arts Center. We're going to have a, a headliner band called Almost Famous. Um, they're from local uh, Douglas County and they uh, have headlined for the Guns N' Roses, they have been at the Callaway Gardens, Mercedes-Benz Stadium, um, so they're pretty well known. We're excited that they um, chose us to come here and, and support our cause. We'll also have outdoor games sponsored by West Georgia Cornhole, and we have um, live music, refreshments uh, sponsored by Taco Mac. So it's going to be a great night. It's only $25 for a ticket, $20 if you're Art Center member. Um, it will be September 20th from 5 to 8 p.m. here at the Art Center. This month, we're starting a new segment that allows us to team up with the Board of Education to receive monthly updates on what's happening within our county school system. Joining me in the studio is the Communication Director of Douglas County School System, Portia Lake. The first day of school got off to a great start when Douglas County Tigers and the Lithia High School Lions welcomed the Eastside Elementary School Bears back to school. Eastside Elementary School Principal Tim Jenkins joined the football team, the band, and the cheerleaders to personally welcome new and returning students to campus. Teachers as well as other administrators formed a long receiving line to greet students as they got off the school bus on the first day of school. Eastside Elementary School decided to host this surprise party because they say they wanted each student to know they are special and valued by their school community. But Eastside is not the only school rolling out the red carpet for students this year. Several other Douglas County schools extended a grand welcome to students this year as well. Educators like Tim Jenkins hope this personal welcome inspires students to reach for the stars and achieve this school year. For the first time ever, all 3,500 Douglas County School System employees gathered under one roof to celebrate one unified mission of educating and equipping our students for success. Employees from all across the county went back to school and hopped on a school bus with their colleagues headed for a morning of team building and motivation. For many employees, the DCSS launch party was a time to reconnect with former colleagues and administrators, many they hadn't seen in years. This year's theme, Reaching for the Stars, was a call for educators, administrators, faculty and staff to do their best to inspire students to be their best. The University of West Georgia Coliseum hosted the event that featured motivating speeches by Superintendent Trent North as well as University President Dr. Kyle Marrero. After the speeches, it was fun time. The employees turned to the Coliseum floor and they turned it into a dance floor. 
And finally, towards the end, Superintendent North challenged the Chapel Hill High School cheerleaders to a dance-off before joining in the celebration of unity, teamwork, and success. Lithia Springs High School was the scene of two surprises early this school year. During a regular staff meeting, a television news crew came to surprise the staff members to thank them for all their hard work educating Douglas County students. The crew treated employees to a special breakfast to help them get their school day started off right. During this surprise event, Lithia Springs teacher Diana Moore received the big news that she is the recipient of the 2018 Georgia Outstanding Biology Teacher Award. The National Association of Biology Teachers has given this award annually since 1961 to a teacher from each state who has made valuable contributions to the profession. At Lithia Springs High School, Moore has led the school's STEM biomedical program to state, national, and international certification and recognition. Moore received a degree from the University of Sacred Heart in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and her MS degree in science education from Florida International University. Moore began teaching at Lithia Springs High School in 2014. Moore has won several awards including the Superintendent Spotlight Award and has been honored by students as the most influential educator of the year in 2018. She's been selected five times to Who's Who's among America's teachers. Diana has also been a presenter at the State STEM Conference. Moore will receive national recognition by the National Association of Biology Teachers at its national conference this fall in California. And this has been your school news for this month. Until next time, I'm Portia Lake. See you soon. We've heard of legends like B.B. King and Nat King Cole, but I bet you haven't heard of Linwood Howard. Linwood is an active member of the Woody Fight Senior Center with a soulful voice that can grab anyone's attention and make their day a little bit brighter. Here's a clip of one of the songs that he performed for a packed house at the Woody Fight Senior Center.
we're going to do um, when you're smiling, dear heart. That's our show for this month. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to check out all of our programming on DCTV 23. You can find us on Comcast Channel 23, AT&T UVerse Channel 99, and online at DCTV23.com. We end our show with a monthly birthday celebration for seniors at the Woody Fight Senior Center. See you next time. Well, good morning to everybody and happy birthday. Thank you. Got all of our good August birthdays here, right? Normally, uh, the chairperson, Dr. Jones, would be here today, but she, she had another engagement she had to be at. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm sure she, that she wanted me to wish you all a happy birthday. We are honored, though, to have our Director of Communications, Rick Martin, here. Okay. And, um, right. okay, Hi. give y'all a chance Hi. to see him. What's your name? My name is Tommy Moore. I was born in uh, Birmingham, Alabama, but I am a Navy wife. I still claim that. So I got a chance to live in many of the states here in America and to have uh, lived outside of the country as well. I was born in August 21st, 1937. All right. All right. All right. All right. So we do Happy have an birthday. international flavor here. <laughs> Navy wife, okay. My name is Rosemary Clemens. I was born in Ferndale, Michigan, and I've been here 15 years, and my birthday was is August the 13th, 1947. Oh. Very good. Congratulations. Oh, thank Congratulations. You. All right, here we go. I'm Lurleen Bro, and I was born in Sparta, Georgia, but I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia, and I lived in Louisiana for 40 years, and I'm back in Atlanta, Georgia home, and very happy to be here. Born August the 17th, 1944. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Okay. I'm Adassa Green. I'm from the high end of Jamaica. <laughs> I'm from Jamaica, West Indies. I was, yes, I, I was in, um, I lived in New York for 40, six years, and now I'm living in Georgia. My birthday is August 12th, 1946, I was born, and I am living in Villarica, but I'm happy to be here. All right. Very good, very awesome. good. I'm Frankie Ty, I was born in Livonia, Georgia, and my birthday is August the 24th. Your age, yes or no? No. 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 Okay. 
Happy okay. birthday. Okay. Okay. My name is Patricia Roberts. I was born in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm old enough. <laughs> okay. I like that. I'm, I'm going to use that one, too. Okay. Okay. Okay, lady. Carol Rapp. I was born August 13th in Columbus, Ohio, and my husband and I have lived in 14 different states. Wow. But ended up back here in Villarica. Okay. Very good. Go Buckeyes. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh Hi. My name is Bessabel Overby. I was born in Cusper, Georgia, Randolph County. I lived in Hartford, Connecticut for 35 years, and I moved back to Georgia, Douglas County. Uh, I was born August 13th, 1946. All right, we've got a couple right. of August 13th babies, I see here. August 16th. Oh, August 16th. August 16th. I'm sorry. Okay. Wow. That's okay, honey. All right. I was born in 1946, too. So. Okay. All right. Hi, my name is Thelma Smith. I was born in Tennessee. I was born August the 18th. I ain't no say what year. But anyway, I've been in the state of Georgia for 30 something years. So this is home to me. Very good. Beautiful. Very good. Glad to have you. Okay, one more. The lady in red, I see. My name is Mary Jeffries. I'm a native Georgian. I've been here all my life. I was born August the 29th, and I love the Lord. Amen. Well, amen to that, honey. <laughs> where in Georgia were you born? Atlanta. In where? Atlanta. Atlanta. Okay. Were you a Grady baby? All right, we always have at least one Grady baby mm. that I know of. How you doing? My name is Larry Cobb. I was born in Marietta, Georgia, Kennestone Hospital in 1948. 1948. Mm -hmm. I'll be 70 this month. Happy birthday. Okay. Happy birthday, Happy birthday sir. 29th August. Okay. Hi, my name is Judy Wilson Ledford. I've lived in Douglasville since 1972. Well, off and on the last 16 years, but I'm back here now. I was born in uh, Roanoke, Alabama which is only 65 miles from here, uh, closer than most of these other people that were born in Georgia except Atlanta. And I did it, live in Atlanta when the uh, population sign said just a little over a million. So right. that's how long I've been here <laughs> in uh, Georgia. So um, yeah, and uh, Douglas County has grown so much in the, <laughs> since 1972. So well, much. Most definitely, yes. When we moved here in the 70s, the Kroger on uh, Highway 5, and, and Highway 5 was two lanes at that point. The Kroger, where the Kroger is now, was cow pasture. Mm -hmm. Oh, I so, remember those days. Yeah, that's right. Wow. That's right. And the expressway ended. At, at Douglasville. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Hi, I'm Irene Lang. I was born in New York, lived all on the East Coast, New York, Florida, and Georgia. <laughs> I was born August 1st, 1946. Very good. Congratulations. <laughs> Happy you. birthday to all of you. Okay. I'm Carolyn Simpson. I was born in uh, Preston, Georgia, just outside of Plains. Uh, I was born in 19. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. And it's your birthday, too. No, no. It is my birthday. This is my birthday month. So I'm Sharon Johnson. I was born in Greenville, South Carolina. I uh, lived there until I, until I migrated to Georgia, you might say, when I left high school. Um, and I'll be 72 on Tuesday. All so. right. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you.